Hi, we are Vered, Daphne and Anat from the Open University of Israel, and we talk about tracing changes over the course of the conversation, a case study on field poses rates. The main concern is how to model a conversation in spoken interactions. We will begin with a short literature survey on how field poses are dealt with in interactions. We then present our goals and research questions and explain about our data set. The main part, prior to the results section, is our methodology, which consists of comparable vectors of different dialogues and different speakers. Studies on field poses in interactions found several variables that affect their use. For example, it was found that reductions in use of field poses are often associated with greater perceived confidence on the part of the talker. Another study found that original leaders in two sequential sessions of American English map tasks exhibit a higher field poses rate than their partners when they switch to the followers role. Further, another study found that the main speaker in multi-party spontaneous conversations used more field poses than the other speakers, possibly to indicate intention to continue. Here we show a naive representation of the frequencies of field poses over the course of a single conversation in our corpus. The y-axis represents field poses occurrences per interposal unit from 0 to 3 in a single utterance, and the x-axis represents the conversation time. This representation shows a dominancy in the use of field poses of one speaker, annotated as the leader in black circles, compared to the other speaker, the follower, in red squares. Zero is assigned to a speaker turn without a field pose. Let's zoom in a bit to the beginning of the conversation. Although putting the field pose annotation in such a way might be good to illustrate a single dialogue, it does not provide measures to analyze interactions between the speakers nor to compare between interactions. Our main goal is to answer the following question. How to represent speakers' field poses rate along the dialogue in a comparable manner? Our analysis is based on the Hebrew Maptas corpus, Matakop. We chose 30 spoken dialogues from this corpus. In this corpus, each speaker participated twice with the same interlocutor, once as a follower and once as a leader. In each session, participants were given a different map out of the two that were chosen from the original standard. This pairwise setting allows comparisons of the speaker's vocal characteristics in both roles with the same interlocutor. We believe choosing this semi-structured setting will abolish the effect of the wide range of variables that affect the rate of field poses, such as the communicative situation, the degree of familiarity between the interlocutors, or the emotional load. 2,257 field poses were annotated in our six hours spoken dialogue corpus. Let's listen to field poses sample from a male speaker. <laughs> Based on the double session setting for each pair of speakers, we ask two questions regarding our corpus. How different are the two speakers in the same session? Our hypothesis is that the frequency of field poses of the two speakers are different. This difference could be explained by two alternative reasons. First, speakers use field poses differently in each role, or persons interlect. This means the differences are expected since each person uses his own field poses rate. Our hypothesis is that although we expect differences due to speakers' idiolect, we expect the role they play to influence as well, as our second hypothesis indicates. Speaker-wise, we ask, how different is a field poses behavior for the same speaker in two different roles? We refer to the one that begins as a leader as person one and the one that begins as a follower as person two. We expect the same speaker to produce along the session different rates of field poses in each role. Specifically, we expect that while playing the leader's role, which means instructing and guiding, a speaker will produce field poses at a higher rate than when playing the follower's role. Each speech interval, an IPU, interposal unit, 
was augmented with the following data. Field poses, words, total tokens, accumulative token, accumulative field poses, and the ratio of the accumulative number of field poses to the accumulative number of tokens for each speaker. In the second stage of the processing, we merge the speech intervals of the two sessions of each pair of speakers. The merged dataset thus contains the intervals of both sessions intertwined in ascending order of the ending time of each IPU. The merged dataset was augmented with four additional vectors corresponding to the four possible combinations of role, leader or follower, and session A or B. The table presents the beginning of the four vectors, the columns on the right. Each vector contains a relative field pose use at the endpoint of each IPU. Look at the Tmax column, separated by session. Look at the first column. The size of the four vectors was thus constructed to be the same. The vector size reflects the number of points in time where at least one of the speakers in one of the sessions, A or B, expressed a field pose or a word. The value in such a point is the current new value for the speaker who spoke in that session and remained equal to the previous value for the other speaker in session. In this way, the last value of each of the four vectors reflects the total number of relative field poses used in a respective session, A or B, for a respective speaker, person 1 or 2. These four vectors are used in subsequent calculations as vectors characterizing the four combinations of role and session. Of course, what you see in the slide is only a small chunk of our dataset. In each dialogue pair, we conducted four comparisons among these vectors relating to the two facets, session and person. The first comparisons on the session facet is the session A comparison, which compares vector 1 to vector 2 the leader versus the follower in session A. The second comparison in session B compares vector 3 to vector 4, the leader versus the follower in session B. The comparisons on the person facet are first person 1 compares vector 1 to vector 4, the leader in session A to the follower in B, same person in a different role. Second person 2 compares vector 2 to vector 3, the follower in session A to the leader in session B, same person in a different role. Here we show an example from two consecutive sessions of the interaction between the vectors. The x-axis represents a normalized time, while the y-axis represents the relative use of field poses. The figure on the left shows convergence between the curves of a single pair of speakers. This convergence is continuing in session B, where the two vectors almost merge. The following features were computed for each vector. Relative use of field poses, we calculated the median value of each vector to represent the relative use of field poses. Last value represents the relative use of field poses in the whole session. Vector slope reflects the direction of change along the session. The following three measures were computed for each comparison. The first volume of difference. As the four vectors are of the same dimension, we could calculate the Euclidean distance between the relevant vectors. We assume that if the distance is higher in the vector 1 versus vector 2 comparison than in the vector 3 versus vector 4 comparison, we may say that speakers in session A differ more from each other compared to the speakers in session B. This is in terms of the relative field pose use along the session. Second, gap of relative use of field poses. We calculated the absolute value of the gap between the two medians. This gap measures the difference between the relative use of field poses of the compared vectors. We assume that the higher this number is, the more different the behavior. Hence, gap of medians. Last, directionality of the gap. For each comparison, we computed the difference between the two vectors and then calculated the slope of the difference along the dialogue. Negative slopes suggest getting closer, meaning entrainment, while positive slopes suggest drifting apart, disentrainment, hence slope of gap. The first descriptive finding is that the number of field poses correlates with the amount of speech. 
the correlation coefficient is 0.612. This is also how we explain the difference between the two sessions. In general, sessions A were longer than sessions B. Session-wise, all comparisons between speakers in the same session were found statistically significant in the median comparison, the last value, and the average of slopes. This is in congruence with our session-wise hypothesis. As there is no theoretical connection between the three metrics and there is no reason to assume dependency between them, we use t-test for these statistics. Speaker-wise, all comparisons were found significant except for the average of slope for speaker 2. Mean values are shown in the table. This is also in congruence with our hypothesis. Here, we show that on average, the highest distance and gap of medians are in session A and for person 1, the one who started as a leader. We found that the difference between speakers in field poses used in sessions A is significantly larger than in session B. We found also that person 1, leader first, tend to change their behavior more than persons 2, followers first. In addition, person 2 have Euclidean distance above the average. On the other hand, all slopes of gaps are very moderate, which can be attributed to the vector's length, and all averages of the slope of gap are negative, which indicates that speakers are getting closer. On average, highest absolute slope of gap, which indicates that speakers are getting closer faster, is in session A and for speaker 2. We run logistic regression classification for the session facet and the person facet. We use the following variables, the relevant Euclidean distance, gap of medians, slope of gaps, and an additional binary variable that is true whenever the gap of medians is higher than the average over all the medians of the relevant facet. The results of the session facet shows approximately 67% correct, and for the person facet, 63% correct. Our main concern was to represent speakers' field poses used along the dialogue as a case study to a new methodology of tracing changes over the course of the conversation. Our first main finding is that there are significant differences in all measures between two different speakers in the same session. Our first hypothesis was confirmed. Speaker-wise, we found several differences in relative field poses used between the same speaker in different roles. Our second hypothesis was partially confirmed. In general, we interpret these results as a cue to the changes in field poses used due to the roles, in both session-wise and speaker-wise. This means that a change in the speaker's own field pose rate according to the role he plays. We also showed that field pose rates are going under a convergence process in two ways, within a session and across sessions. In both sessions, leader's slope is decreasing, follower's slope is increasing. The gap between the two roles played by the same speaker is decreasing, apparently the effect of the role is fading. The gaps in session B are smaller than in session A. These findings strengthened previous studies on the influence of extralinguistics variables on the rate of field poses. We argue that our method of analysis combines both a global and a local perspectives of interaction. The medians over the entire session for the global measures and the distance between each pair of adjacent field poses for the local measures. In this study, we presented a methodology to measure the degree of use and the interaction between speakers in terms of field poses in task-oriented dialogues. We believe this case study can be adapted to other prosodic and linguistic annotations as well.